Nice to see you again. Good to see you it's again. It's been TK. about a year. It has. Um, we're not at the beach, no, but it's you a know, different environment. It's still California. I'll it's say still it's still California. Nice. <laughs> it's cold. Um, it's crisp. It is. It is. And um, you know, it's it's nice. I'll say this. It's nice to see familiar faces. It's nice to see um, the community, the media tech community, grow. Yeah. Uh, I'll say this. Obviously, you know, not a lot of people can see this, but the community or the amount of people that are at the event this year have has you know flourished and there's so many more people so many more creators like i felt like it was a big family like the family is growing and i want to say thank you obviously as usual i did that last year thank you for inviting me thank you for letting me be part of the event well you're part of the family tk i appreciate it and, and no no but it's it's and we started this thing back in in coronado like a few years back um you know it's like i always remember where where dimensity was kind of born mm -hmm. we talked about it we started like you know 5g that's where it's going to be going and coming in uh, but I do want to say first and foremost again, thank you for, for spending some time okay. with us. Uh, we had a lot of things announced yesterday. I want to talk to you about some of those. Great. And um, for everybody that's not familiar, this is Finbar Moynihan is basically literally like, I would say the big shot at, at MediaTek, but you know, <laughs> VP, corporate corporate marketing, corporate marketing <laughs> um, the, the man to go when you have a lot of questions when it comes down to the we'll do our best. Um, so overall, Dimensity 9200 yep. or 9200, I've heard it multiple different ways. Either is fine like the amount of improvements you guys have done. Talk to us a little bit maybe about um, like the, you know, Dimensity, what does the 9200 mean for MediaTek? Obviously, I also wanna talk about last year's yeah. and the roadmap, but like, please start off with the, with the star. Sure, sure. Um, it's obviously a big step for us, right? And yeah. I think, you know, as our CEO Rick talked about, you know, in previous events and you know, yeah, yeah. at last year's event when he was virtual and, and again this year, you know, our commitment to the flagship and to the high end of the mobile roadmap is solid, right? Mm -hmm. We are, you know, we've been at this for a couple of years planning, yeah, yeah. you know, we launched the Dimensity 9000 as the first step last year, and I think we were very happy with the progress we made on the first step. Yeah. But clearly, you know, you have to keep upping your game every year in this game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So 9200, I think, checks all the boxes, right? You know, we've got leading connectivity with mm -hmm. 5G millimeter wave, Wi-Fi 7. We've got, I want to talk a little bit about that as well. We'll yeah. get to that. We've got obviously, you know, major upgrades in the computing. Mm -hmm. Graphics, I think, has taken a huge step forward this Massive. year with Immortalis from ARM, with ray tracing. You know, Absolutely. I think really yeah, big yeah. step. You know, and then of course we continue to enhance things like camera, the AI, and all the other core competencies. But you know, I feel like the 9200 is really checking all the boxes of what you need in a flagship solution. Absolutely. You know, going into 2023. And I also feel like you're pushing a certain part of the envelope as well. You're not just checking the boxes, you're introducing. Like you talked about the ray tracing with the GPU, mm -hmm. and we want to talk about that as well. Um, Wi-Fi 7 for me last year was um, a conversation. Mm -hmm. It was, we'll have something at CES, mm -hmm. we really didn't have anything kind of look at. But you guys made it reality now. Mm -hmm. It's not a conversation anymore, it's literally the, the move forward. And so how do you see Wi-Fi 7 feeding in or helping MediaTek, I guess, grow in you know, improve the, the portfolio, improve the relationship with, uh, with other companies? You know, one of, the, one of the themes we've obviously been talking about at the event is more than mobile, right? So we're much yeah. more yeah, than yeah, a yeah, mobile yeah. company, which I think is still what most people know us as. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Wi-Fi connectivity is a hugely important part of our business portfolio, Absolutely. particularly in our smart edge segment, right? Because mm -hmm. obviously everything at the edge is connected and, and mostly with Wi-Fi. You know, our Wi-Fi business is very strong. Mm -hmm. right? When you look at our position in retail, routers, broadband access, consumer electronics devices, PC, notebooks, IoT. Absolutely. We have a very broad range of Wi-Fi solutions and we have a very large market share, probably number one in many of those segments. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I think that MediaTek can do, now that we have kind of accelerated the technology investment, we're in the leading pack of solution providers mm -hmm. for Wi-Fi, we've introduced our access point, Phylogic 880, and our client solution, 380. Yeah. Because of course, to make this work, it needs to work end to end, end right? To end, From the course, access yeah, point yeah. to the client. I think where MediaTek can help is the broad range of platforms that we can deliver. Mm -hmm. So on one side, you know, we have solutions for um, fiber gateways and 5G CPE mm -hmm. and retail router access points where MediaTek can provide the full platform mm -hmm. with Wi-Fi 7 connectivity. Yeah. Yeah. On the client side, Mobile, PC notebook, smart TV, IoT, compute, um, consumer electronics devices, set-top box, OTT. Oh, Again, yeah, yeah. Chromebooks we can and stuff provide like all of those, all yeah, exactly. of those platforms. So I think what MediaTek can do is attach Wi-Fi 7 as part of those platforms mm -hmm. to help accelerate the proliferation of Wi-Fi 7 end-to-end. Because -end. again, the whole experience is only delivered if you've got Wi-Fi 7 on the access and Wi-Fi 7 on the, on the client side. 
And, and specifically, that I found interesting that you guys focused on doing 2.4 and Wi-Fi 7 as opposed to doing, five, you know, the, yeah. the technology you focus on giving in, because you still need 2.4. A lot of, of people don't realize, yeah. um, like for me, I, I, I was working with some of, the, some of your technologies actually with T-Mobile and some of their uh, connectivity for internet for the home. The biggest thing I notice is that a lot of the smart devices don't like five gigahertz. Mm -hmm. They like to stick at the 2.4, where there's actually starting to become more room now, which yeah. is because everybody's shifting over. And Wi-Fi 7, or at least the approach that you guys were doing, trying to focus on 2.4 and 7, it focuses better, it gives you the better connectivity yep. and less congestion and less chances of interacting or interference between the two protocols, at least yeah. with everybody else being on Wi-Fi 6 or 6E. And one of the new features of Wi-Fi 7, which we're very excited about, mm -hmm. is MLO, right? Mm -hmm. Multi-link operation, Absolutely. where you can actually sort of aggregate those channels together to mm -hmm. have the best of both worlds. So you get that combination of high throughput, mm -hmm. range where you need it, because 2.4 will go longer than the five or six gigahertz, um, or even latency improvements. So it really is kind of like a, a really good new technology that Wi-Fi 7 introduces, I think. Well, so that was the thing about it. So uh, when we talk latency, for me, uh, the first thing I think of is, is gaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, you say the word latency, to me I'm thinking yeah. um, audio latency, Wi-Fi connectivity, especially when you're connected and you're wireless. So. Yeah. Um, I also have an opportunity to play for like a very, very short time with the ROG Phone 6D, yeah. the Dimensity 9000 Plus. And I know we talked 9000, mm -hmm. we've seen before, but you did release an updated version later in the year yeah. that is currently starting to go out and it, it is available in a gaming phone. Exactly. So gaming, ray tracing, you touched on it a little bit with the 9200. Yeah. You're, you're incorporating ray tracing at, at the hardware level. So this is actually now natively supported. Yeah. Uh, with the X uh, with the X3 uh, system that we have here with yep. the i2, so how does that does that change? Is that a new direction for MediaTek to try to focus in in that aspect, ray tracing, th those yeah. type of performance? I, I would say gaming is not a new focus, right? Even if you go all the way back to our 4G portfolio, mm -hmm. we had a whole successful range of Helio G devices. That's true. Yeah, that yeah. that focused on gaming. Now, with the 9000, 9000 plus, 9200, we're clearly at a different level here. Oh, right? absolutely, And yes. so, so the focus on gaming has always been there, but we're at a higher level now. I think when we look at the flagship tier, there's definitely a strong focus on that whole gaming experience mm -hmm. for the consumer. Of course, a very important part of that is the graphics IP and the GPU IP. So we've worked very closely with ARM. We had ARM Mali last year. We mm -hmm. have the new you know, flagship ARM Immortalis G17 this year. Going up to 11 cores as we've well. We've upped yeah. the core count. So again, that's you know, a larger portion of the silicon area, mm -hmm. cost at the end of the day, committed to graphics. So I think that sends a message as well. But beyond just the graphics core and the graphics capability, mm -hmm. we focus a lot on a suite of technologies that we call Hyper Engine. This okay. is the oh, yeah, sixth. Hyper Engine 6. Yeah. This is the sixth version of our suite of technologies. And those are all technologies designed to try to enhance the experience for the user. Yes. So it's audio, it's motion blur on the screen yes. when you touch. It's you know latency reduction when you're connected to Wi-Fi or 5G. Mm -hmm. It's you know AI technology to improve the throughput and the display. Absolutely. All of these come together. Resource management because of course gaming is a high power use case. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It it it. it um the reason why I was so excited when I saw it on the ROG phone is because uh, ASUS and, and ROG do a very good job in, like they're calling it their X mode, essentially yeah. is their hub to all, allow you to overclock, underclock, customize yeah. everything, and just in, you know, I like immerse you in the gaming experience. Yeah. So that's why I'm excited to see. Obviously this doesn't have the 92, hopefully the, yeah. the ROG 7 will be, uh, but it's exciting to see where you are now with, because yes. uh, that was the other thing I wanted to mention is, this is the second time you guys are going with TSMC. This yep. is the second iteration because the 9000 Plus was the first. Mm -hmm. um, and we saw a lot of improvements, not only in performance, power management, yep. power draw. Um, is that continuing for you guys with, with the 9200 as far as you know, better, less power, longer yeah. battery life type of experience? Yeah, yeah. Like our, our theme for the 9200 you know, is um, incredible performance, intelligent power. So mm -hmm. you'll see that theme as we, as we go forward. And that really is at the core of what we're trying to do. Because yeah. As you get into these advanced process technologies with all of this IP, mm -hmm. you really have to be very careful about balancing performance and power. Oh, absolutely. You can, yeah, yeah. you can dial the performance arrow too far, and then it's really not a usable power experience for the consumer. So mm -hmm. it's always that balance of power and performance that we're trying to achieve. I think the combination of the, you know, the architecture, our partnership with TSMC and their process technology, you know, the IP that we've used, mm -hmm. 
and how we build these whole systems. You know, we've learned a lot from the 9,000, from the 9,000 plus. Yeah. A lot of that knowledge has fed into our direction on the 9200 mm -hmm. to kind of continue that journey. So you can see from the benchmarks that we talked about at the events this week, you know, we're obviously pushing performance higher. Absolutely. But we're also very conscious of power consumption and user experience. Because at the end of the day, you know, a consumer wants a sustained experience, not a 30 second good benchmark number. Absolutely, no, no, absolutely. And I think there was a lot of challenges in the, in the uh, initial release um, of some of the devices that we see early in 2022, where, yeah, you, you did get that burst of you mm -hmm. know, the first maybe few minutes, but then thermals were becoming a concern. Yeah. And I think that's what I appreciated what we're at the TSMC is bringing in with their, the 4 nanometer approach into it. Uh, we saw that it was actually yeah. tangible. Yeah. Uh, and, and our packaging technology, yeah. our, our, we put a lot of focus on the packaging of the 9200 as well. Yeah. Which again is all focused on thermal, sustained, high performance. Oh, no, absolutely. And, and we're talking also faster RAM, faster yeah, UFS 4.0. Uh, check, check, check. Speed is not an issue, I would probably say yeah. uh, there. The other thing that I was also very, very excited to see is Sony's presence. In so, yep. like twice. We mm -hmm. didn't even just see them once. We saw them coming up a couple of times. Yeah. Um, the, the VR experience, obviously, I mean, the TV area, we know Sony is is amazing. Bravia, yeah. their their technology, um, and you have obviously uh, a representative from Sony talking about that. Yeah, yeah. The is are we starting to see more of a like a partnership? I mean, I know you guys have worked with with them before, but yeah. is it more of like there's going to be co-branding, maybe uh, providing uh, better visibility into that the fact that MediaTek is in there? Because on the portfolio with your with the laptops with the Companio side, we're starting to see. Mm -hmm. you know, the MediaTek sticker on it, which it's exciting for me to see that because yep. like I know what's in there, but I love when people can recognize, you know, that, that yellow, that golden yellow mm -hmm. and white mm -hmm. coloring. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how does that conversation with Sony going in and, and VR? We're talking yeah, yeah. gaming. It, well, so, I mean, Sony's obviously been a customer and a partner for many, many years, as yeah. Keysan talked about with the journey from the TVs from back in 2012, right? Absolutely. Through all of the, you know, success that Sony has had in that, 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 that segment. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it's, we also said in the discussion that, you know, we would, we knew that our early engagements in the metaverse AR, VR were going to be custom engagements, right? Mm -hmm. So again, I think it's a testament to just the long-term partnership between the two companies yeah, yeah. that Sony came to us for those custom solutions. Obviously, those are custom solutions for Sony. So the definition, the specking, all of that is, is driven by them. So we're probably not going to talk too much about the details because we leave that, we leave that I'm, for them. I'm, I'm very happy to say that, um, if there was like one request from last year, I said, I wanted more demos. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get enough? I, I, you, you, thank you. And, and, and <laughs> like there was... We do listen to you guys. No, no, I know. And it, but it's exciting. You know yeah. what I mean? Like seeing ray tracing in action, yeah. seeing uh, the, you know, the ability of seeing that image just shift literally like PC experience yeah. on Wi -Fi mobile. 7. Now you guys were partnering obviously with an, there's a an game that's coming up early yeah. next year and it's going to give us a little bit more in that. Um, it, it just makes me excited to see the presence. Yeah. And I think and with there Sony... Is, there is work to do in that area, right? Because yeah, yeah. obviously we have to work with the game developers, Absolutely. with the ecosystem to bring that capability into the, you know, take advantage of the ray tracing capability and all the other features. That is something we're focused on. Yeah. More will come in that area, but clearly we're building platforms for the future here. So we will be building as we go forward. You mentioned it earlier, which is more than mobile. Mm -hmm. We heard that a lot yesterday. Yeah. And, I, and I understand that this is... Um, I mean, maybe I'm wondering, is this a new direction in the, in the conversation? Or you, is it you want to make it more aware so people know that you guys are more than just mobile device yeah. manufacturers or SOC manufacturers? I think MediaTek has always been an extremely diversified company. We've had a very broad range mm -hmm. of products, a very synergistic range of, of products. You know, if you look at the last couple of quarters in the last year, you know, mobile smartphones mm -hmm. is, is yeah. probably 50, 55 percent of our revenue. Right? Okay which means you know, 45, 40 something percent of our revenue is more than mobile. More than mobile. Um, you know, a big chunk of that is what we call our smart edge devices. Yeah. So that's everything from all our Wi-Fi solutions, our smart TV solutions, you know, all of our smart home solutions. So OTT set-top box, you know, smart speakers, smart displays, Absolutely. our IoT activity, our automotive activity, we lump all of that in there. But again, it's a lot of you know, smart connected edge devices for a whole bunch of smart solutions. You know, a lot of it is Wi-Fi connected and that's where like that Wi-Fi 7 ecosystem will, will develop. And then we've got about, you know, seven, eight percent of our businesses in our power management business, okay. which is a separate part of our business. Um, but I mean, I think what we see really is we've had phenomenal success over the last couple of years. I think Rick said our revenue has grown 4x in mobile since the first executive summit in, in Coronado in 2019. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We've had some growth and good growth as well in the other segments, but I think as we look forward and as you know, Vince talked about in the session, 
more of the growth opportunities we see are in that smart edge, smart connected, more than mobile part of the, the business, whether it's IoT, automotive, the metaverse, you know, even what we talk about as sort of 5G use cases beyond the smartphone. Mm -hmm. So we've had a lot of success with our 5G fixed wireless CPE solutions. Yeah, yeah, I saw you guys were mentioning that in Europe as well. Connected PC, yeah, yeah. telematics is growing, mm -hmm. IoT industrial. So we see a very strong opportunity, I think, for growth in the sort of beyond smartphone, if you like, part of the 5G ecosystem as well. No, no, absolutely, and I think that's the biggest, um, I, I, I'm not, it's going to sound cheesy, but I still use the the toothbrush I got from you guys last year. It, it's powered you by guys love that. <laughs> no, I know. It was like it's like the like I'm not saying it's the weirdest thing, but it's like those things that you just don't think. Exactly. Um, you know, uh, you know, it, it, it's actually smart and it's intuitive. It, it and integrates. Useful. No, it is, and it includes Alexa. If you forget something, you can add it to the list right yeah. there. You're not having to go into the office or wherever the speaker. Because we all is. do a little thinking when we're brushing our teeth. Absolutely, <laughs> and and to me, it was just these little things. Um, you know, uh, collaboration with T-Mobile, working with them on their on the Revel devices with them. C700, yep. and we, when we saved Dimensity from 2019, and I don't want to obviously belittle too much, but that portfolio of Dimensity processors, you guys have expanded quite a bit. Yeah. Like from the 1000 to the 700, to the 1200, to the 8000, the 8100, I mean, we're talking a massive portfolio of, of uh, uh, SOCs from, uh, from all the way from the budget to the mid-range, yep. all the way to the flagship. And I kind of want to close up our interview this morning talking a little bit about availability and, you know, obviously Dimensity 9200 for me is the star of the show. Mm -hmm. How, what's the vision for 9200 as far as, you know, uh, market, uh, globally, U.S., yeah, or, yeah. you know? I think, you know, like like everything, as I said, you know, the 9000 was our first flagship launch last year. Absolutely. You know, um, you know it, it's not just a big effort on our side, but it's also a massive effort on the OEM side to build those flagship devices, right? So, you know, um, I think... They, you know, we've been very happy that all the major OEMs have adopted, you know, so Oppo, Vivo, Xiaomi, Oh, Honor, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. OnePlus, uh, we've adopted. seen, yeah, Dimensity is everywhere. Yeah. I mean, again, when I mentioned Revel, I'm, we're talking U.S. carrier, yeah. T-Mobile. It's in stores, it's people can see the hardware. It's no yeah. longer just, you know, uh, yeah. you know. But, but for sure, the Dimensity 9000 success in 22 was much more concentrated in specific regions absolutely. of China. Mm -hmm. um, I think now that we've built up a base with the 9000, you know, engaged with all of the OEMs, they've also got more comfortable with our technology at that high end because it's a it's a big step for them as well. Um, I think we're going to see more global expansion with the 9200, um, different OEMs, different regions, um, and I think that will continue. But it's it's a journey. It's going to take us some time to really grow that globally. It's it, it makes me very excited to hear that. It's nice to see the not just the, the trust, but also the collaboration between you and the OEMs. And, yeah. and like you said, it is a journey. Yeah. 9,000 was step one, 9,000 plus step two, and then seeing hopefully in, is there any, maybe, are you able to share any name of any companies that maybe could be potentially releasing the 9200 at some yeah, point? Yeah, well, Vivo, Vivo's already started talking about their plans, so okay. Vivo will be the first one to launch the, oh, the 9200. So. That, that's exciting. I'm, I'm a big fan. The X74 Plus, my buddy uh, Juan Carlos, he's in the background right now, so you guys can't see him. He's waving at us right there. I had to take that out from his hands, but uh, I'm a big fan of Vivo. I'm a big fan, obviously. I want to say thank you very much, and I... I'm excited and I can't wait to see what else is going to be coming out. Because I know this is not the end of the story. This is just literally the beginning of next year. Yep. I know we're at the end of 2022, but 2023 is going to be amazing. We're going into planning for next year already. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, and there'll be like successors for the, you know, the 1000 series, the 8000 series, and all the other, uh, the, the 700 series and so on. And I think that's what I'm excited to see. Uh, we talked about TVs. We talked about Chromebooks, the new technology with the companion options as well and PlayStation. So, I mean, I'm excited. I'm hoping there'll be an active demo at CES. Maybe we can try the VR too. Uh, the headset looks amazing. And I'm just happy that, again, you got more demos. I was <laughs> like, thank you for the demos. You're welcome. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for uh, MediaTek for allowing us to be part of this. I hope you guys found this uh, interview informative. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you'd like to know. And of course, uh, keep it here. Make sure to check out MediaTek's website, their socials. Their, the conversation, again, it's not over. This is the beginning of 2023. We just happened to be in November of 22. Talk Thanks, to you. TK. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Appreciate Thank you. It.